Hey, War of the Vision fans. This is Nash Taters, bringing you back another episode of War of the Visions. I think today I'm just going to kind of hang out, chat about how I feel about War of the Visions, life in general, and what I really honestly plan to do with this channel going forward in the future. Let's go ahead and begin with how I feel about EX and War of the Visions after the one year mark. I think overall, they did a fairly good job with the one year anniversary celebration on Global Server. And I can only comment on the global server because, well, I never really played on the JP server. All I did was essentially watch YouTubers and how their experiences were, given the fact that there are a lot of stuff that happened on the JP server during the one year anniversary. And I think it kind of contributes to the idea of how I always feel. The fact that JP server comes before global server in terms of events and whatnot, it kind of makes you realize that it gives the producers, the designers, a little bit of time to fix some of the, perhaps the mistakes that they made on the JP server. And I think I always feel blessed about that. And overall, I feel like they did a pretty good job, right? And I think the only thing I could complain about really is still the fact that I'm not a huge fan of the EX job per, per se, but I'm adapting to it. And I think over time, you're gonna get used to it just like any change, right? People in general don't really enjoy change. And when changes do occur, sometimes suddenly, we tend to kind of like, you know, go against it, maybe get a little irritated, and over time, everything heals, you know, if it was a wound in the first place. And I think overall, I still enjoy World of the Visions a lot. I love the game and the concepts, the character designs, the art, the story. Actually, I started to watch a little bit of the story towards chapter 13. I kind of just got wanted to see what was all this fuss leading up to, right? It took 13 chapters, and seemingly this was part one of a long storyline. And in the future, we're probably gonna see a lot more units, a lot more different th stuff that's occurring. And I think that's the beauty of these type of games. It will never really end unless the players say so. We can always speak with our wallet, as the players did on the JP server. They decided to tell the company that, hey, listen, enough is enough with certain things. And I think what's going to come up in the next few months could be a testament to how the players are going to react to all of these cost 100 units. And personally, I'm not a huge fan of cost 100 units, but I also appreciate and understand why they employ them. And generally speaking, when they reduce the game to essentially try to get players to spend a lot of money just to play with 100 cost units like they tried on Japan, it doesn't bode very well with players. And I think the company needs to kind of relax a little bit on that, right? I think the concept of 100 units is fine if you only have one or two out of the hundreds. And right now we're already up to what, five or six? And I think that's just a little too much. I think they really need to kind of tone down on that and if they do release it, I think it's fine. It just space it out a lot more than they need to. And I think ultimately there should be other things attached to the 100 cost units instead of forcing the meta, as people call it, in terms of arena and PVP and guild wars, which by the way, Japan is experiencing a issue in which only two units is heavily dominating PVP. I hate games. I hate games. Let me re-emphasize. I hate games when they do it that way. I think it takes the fun out of it. It takes the creativity out of a strategy game. And when you do things like that, where people have to scramble to beat a composition that's only using two units to essentially dominate Guild Wars and, and PvP and Arena, it, it really makes me despise PvP in general. I know global players actually enjoy PvP a lot more so than JP players. And maybe, just maybe, we'll get to deal with it a lot easier than the JP players are. But I guess time will tell on that. And I think that's how I'm really going to say about World Divisions, to be honest. I still think it's a great game. I think I spent a decent amount of money over the course of the last couple of months. And when I looked at my credit card receipts, I realized, you know, maybe I spent a little too much by my own standards. Maybe two Krakens and Whales is not a huge, big deal. But to me, I realized spending on games like this that never ends, all you're essentially doing is you're trying to keep up. And I don't even know why I'm trying to keep up, considering that I just play mostly PvE. So, I think that's something I also need to tweak on my own. Let's go ahead and talk about life in general. I think my life is moving towards a direction where I'm not getting any younger. 
So I need to start concentrating on my health, right? I need to go to the gym. And right now I'm already eating healthier. And, and I think that needs to be a lifestyle rather than a sort of a band-aid fix. When you just go on diets, it, it works for a little while, but it doesn't work for the long term because you're going to go back to your older habits and most likely you're going to kind of start gaining weight again. And I think for me, I just need to start living a healthier lifestyle, period. I tried it many times. It hasn't worked. And I think once you get to a happy point in your life, you have to accept the fact that, you know, time is very limited in, on this planet of ours. And I think we're lucky if we live to maybe 80 or 90, right? And so for me, that's more than half. I'm more than halfway there. So I think I need to start taking care of myself more, which will lead to other things, right? Right now I'm doing financially pretty okay, right? And I'm trying to do certain things to make sure that the second half of my life gets taken care of. And so that might mean I might work a little bit more. That might mean that I might start taking on other ventures. And so I think that's important, right? You need to have that balance in your life. And I feel like I'm blessed that I met my fiance. I'm blessed that I have the friends that I have and I'm blessed that I have the family that I have. I don't think everyone can say that about their own life. And I do feel bad for those who are not as privileged as me. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, I don't have sense of entitlement. I always worked hard. My parents brought us to this country and we they worked hard to, to provide for us. And we were never wealthy or even rich. We got to the point of comfort level perhaps when I was in middle school. And even then, it wasn't that easy for us. You know, I didn't get everything that I wanted as a kid. And, 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 and in reflections as an adult now, that's fine because now financially stable, I can buy all the things that I wanted as a kid. And I think that's why nostalgia is such a big thing for me playing this game and living my life. And now finally, I'll go ahead and reflect a little bit about what I want to do with this channel. I think I'm treating it as a full-time job for a good bit there, you know? And after hitting 1,000 subscribers and starting to monetize, I realized the money is not much, you know? You have to do a lot more in order to perhaps potentially try to make a living out of it. And that could mean streaming full time and then watching RNJ and Diggs and some of the other YouTubers on Twitch, I just don't see myself doing that. Streaming every single day perhaps or five days a week and you're eating in front of the computer, eating during the stream and you always have to try to create new things and things like that, it's a full time job. And I think given the fact that there's a pandemic going on still, I think a lot of people have that luxury of the free time to do it. But what about once life returns to some sort of normalcy? I want to start traveling again. I don't ever envision myself streaming all the time and then go on vacation and hurt myself in that sense. So in that way, I feel like I need to start treating this channel more as a hobby. And I think I've emphasized it before, but I was actually doing it. I was trying to put out videos every day. I was trying to spend a lot of time creating things and, uh, you know, worry about maybe streaming more than I need to and all this stuff, playing the game maybe a little bit too much at times. And I think I need to start cutting back on a lot of those things. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put on content when I feel like it's right. And I've always said that, like, I need to be comfortable with the content. I feel like sometimes I force content and as a result, it hurts me and it hurts my channel. And perhaps that's what happened when I was starting to, to create this channel, to, to enjoy the channel. I know there's a lot of supporters for me and supporting the way I look at life. And there have been plenty of people who didn't want to support me. And that's fine. And that's life, right? At the end of the day, if, if anything, there's the learning lesson. You can't expect everyone to enjoy who you are, see the things the way you see things. In fact, just the other day, I watched someone's video about how the Gamia code, they hated it. They think it's one of the worst things in a game or, or something like that. And they think it's not worth it. And they think this and that. And, you know, it's funny. It's like, I think that is a great item. And in the end of the video, that person said they're still going to get the item. So then it made me think, then why are people creating content like this? Are they just doing it just to get attention? Are they doing it just to do it? Sometimes I feel like people do things, perhaps not popular ideas or whatever, just so it can get views and so they can do things so they can do things. And at the end of the day, I understand why people do it. We're all human beings. We all want what 
luxury items, perhaps comfort of life, money, whatever the case is, and everyone has to do what they need to do in order to either scramble, hustle, whatever you want to call it. But I don't envision myself doing this forever. I'm in my mid 40s. You know what I mean? Like, what are you guys gonna watch someone who's streaming when he's in his 50s? Am I gonna be still streaming? Actually, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea because I'm sure there's not a whole lot of 50 year old streaming out there playing video games. And I think my passion and love for video games is never gonna change. I think I'm always gonna play games. Maybe that will be my little niche, you know, in the market and the world of, of streaming. I actually enjoy streaming very much because I, I get to interact with folks. And I think that's what I want to emphasize a little bit more, where maybe I'll stream more, but only because I want to, not because I have to. And I think that's going to be the key difference. And now I truly understand why Cabbage doesn't really care about monetizing his channel. Because in the day, he wants to do it because he wants to do it on his, you know, his way. He wants to do it the way he wants to do it. And he wants to do it, make sure that, you know, he's not being tied down with a lot of the bureaucracy and the red tape and things like that. And uh, hopefully, I think if people want to support my channel, you know, keep watching, keep giving me the views, you know, give, give me the tiny bit of ad revenue, because all I'm really going to do is put that money back into the game. And I also set up sort of a donation thing. Obviously, I'm not asking people to donate, but just the option is there. And of course, when I do stream, I also, I guess YouTube has this thing where if you donate a amount of cash or whatever, you could actually like put yourself up in terms of chat or something. It's like all these little features is just trying to get people to generate money. And for me, I don't really mind generating money, but at the same time, I want people to understand I'm not here to beg for money. I, I make a good living. You know, I can afford to spend on this game and maybe not like a, a high level like some players, but nevertheless, it's, it's, it's what I do. Like I enjoy spending because there are certain things that I want to do in this game. And sometimes I feel like I got lost along the way. I felt like I was doing it because I want to do it for content. And personally, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do something for the sake of content. I want to do it because I actually enjoy, you know, spending the money on something specifically that I want. And so I think that's what I want to do. And that's what I want to show people moving forward in the future that, you know, you may expect videos, you know, five times a week like they used to be. But I think what I'm going to do is release videos when I feel like it's the right time every day. And if there's no videos, don't be surprised as there's no video. You know, it just means that I feel like there's nothing really worthy of talking about. My biggest ones, of course, are still, I wanna do, should you be spending your materials for your crafting items? I think that's a really good one. I feel like I really need to kind of hone in on that. I also wanna review units more, especially the lower rarities, because that's kind of where I found myself on this channel. And I think going forward in the future, there's going to be more need for people to realize are some of the units worth building. And I think ultimately everyone's going to probably build every lower tier units or lower rarity units simply because of the selection quests. But I think it's a good idea to talk about maybe some builds, some more theory crafting. And I think a lot of people enjoy those type of content. I think ultimately I just want to kind of do summon videos, talk about current events, and of course, some review videos of my own. And of course, I'll stick to my Friday night stream as long as I can do it. But if I go on vacation or something, maybe I'll just go ahead and switch it to a different night for that week or something like that. End of the day, I feel like what I dreamt about doing on YouTube for gaming isn't what I was end up doing. And I think that's fine, right? Sometimes not everything is for you. I still love doing it. I just don't see myself doing it as a career. And I think I still want to perhaps do other things on YouTube but that remains to be seen. All right, I think that's all the time out for this video. I wanna thank y'all for watching and I wanna thank y'all for the continued support. If you wanna see this channel keep growing, you wanna see me keep doing what I do, maybe tell you some friends to subscribe or whatever the case we need to do to get this channel even bigger. Until next time, take care of yourself, all your loved ones. Nash Taters out of here. Take care.